If your dog has separation anxiety, then you've probably heard a ton of times, don't say hello, don't say goodbye to your dog. It just reinforces their fear. On this channel, we like to look at the science and the scientific literature behind all of those ideas. Unfortunately, there isn't any papers, there aren't any empirical data on specifically saying hello and goodbye to dogs. Now, there was a paper done that looked at five dogs, but those five dogs did not have separation related problems. And so there isn't really any paper that's looking at a dog with separation anxiety to answer this question. So in this video, I'm going to be breaking down my personal opinion on the topic, whether or not you should say hello and goodbye to your dog if they have separation anxiety. And this opinion is based off of my practical experience working with dogs with separation anxiety. And it's also based in my education coming up. What's up guys, it's Jenna with Dog Liaison where I coach you on how to enhance your dog's mental health. I'm a professional dog trainer who works solely with dogs facing anxiety. And in my signature program, the Recovering Rover program, we coach parents on how to recover their dog from a life of separation anxiety. And so we help our clients work through their dog's separation anxiety. And one of the questions we get all the time is, how am I supposed to behave when I leave my dog? And how am I supposed to behave when I return? Let's first begin with what you should do when you leave your dog. Now, separation anxiety is an anxiety disorder. <laughs> it's rooted in anxiety. And people don't realize this, but anxiety is actually the preparation for the event. It's a little bit different than fear, which is the actual event. And if you're looking for a better understanding and a better elaboration on the difference between anxiety and fear, you can check out this video that I did. Make sure you open that in a new tab and watch it. But anxiety is about the preparation. It is the what if game. When you leave your dog, your dog is playing the what's going to happen next game in their mind. And it is pandemonium in their heart. It is just major panic. And so these dogs that really feel like they're playing the what if game thrive off of predictability. They thrive off of structure. They thrive after an order of an events, right? They like to know if this happens, then that's going to happen. Then that's going to happen. The reality is that even if you don't give your dog a formal verbal cue, even if you don't say like, goodbye, I love you. And you're petting them and it's a whole thing. Your dog is still creating some sort of cue in their mind, whether that's you grabbing your keys or you grabbing your purse or you walking towards the door or you putting on your shoes, whatever it is, your dog is creating a cue already in their mind that tells them you're about to leave. The problem is not the cue itself. The problem is the interpretation or the association of the cue. So I think we need to get past the idea of just randomize so much that your dog doesn't know when you're leaving because that's pretty darn impossible. Your dog is going to create some sort of cue to them that means you're leaving. The important part here is that we need to make sure that the cue is a good sign. We need to make sure that your dog sees what's coming next is positive. Not that, oh, they're grabbing their keys and that means that I'm going to be left alone. And that means I'm not going to know what's going to happen after that. But instead it's, they're grabbing their keys. They're going to walk out the door and they're going to come back in the door. And that is the order of events. And then I'm going to feel comfortable and safe the entire time. So we're changing the association of the cue. We're not trying to eliminate the cue. Now in this video, I'm not going to be really breaking down exactly the protocol to make your goodbyes a better, happier experience for your dog. That's something that I explained in this video. And if you're looking for more information, that's the video to check out first. It's going to give you your next steps. It's a tutorial. But what we need to talk about in this video is actually what energy level should you be actually using when you walk out the door? So should you be very animated and happy and throwing a party? Or should you be pretty stoic and stone faced and just walking out the door that way? The first thing you need to think about is what energy level do you actually want to instill in your dog and how does your dog respond to your energy? So I don't usually like to use words like energy because they're super vague, but think about how your dog responds to your smiling faces or your tone or how fast you move your body, right? Actual behaviors that you do. We can sum that up in your energy. So what we want to be thinking about is first and foremost, does your dog respond to your excitability and replicate that? 
dogs tend to mirror us very well. Uh, they've literally evolved to understand our body language and, and to blend in with our body language very cohesively. And so many dogs do respond to our excitability and mirror that. Which means if your dog is doing this, and not all dogs do, but if your dog is doing this and you end up becoming super happy, super animated, super everything aroused, then when you go out that door, your dog is also going to be super excitable, super aroused, super stimulated. And you need to think about whether or not that's a good idea. Remember that when we're talking about arousal and we're talking about excitability, Emotions do come into play, but we're not really thinking about happy excitement or sad excitement. We, it's excitement is excitement. Arousal is arousal. Adrenaline is adrenaline. It's a neutral state, right? And so if you build up your dog's excitement and you get that adrenaline pumped and you're going, 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 it's not a huge switch for that dog to then keep all of that arousal in a quote unquote negative stress, right? It doesn't take much for them to jump over. So you kind of want to think about actually what you probably want your dog to be doing when you're leaving is to be chill on the couch, calm, relaxed, hanging out, right? You wouldn't want them to be animated jumping off the walls. And therefore, you want to make sure that your energy is also that very chill, very calm. When you pet your dog, you're not scratching them up wild, wild, wild but you're keeping it super calm and super soft, right? When you say goodbye or you give them a see you later, it's nonchalant, see you later. It's cool, right? It's not stimulating and arousing. On the other hand, if you feel like, I don't really wanna say goodbye to my dog every time I leave, then don't be doing that because one of the things we're gonna be talking about in a second is the routine. We're gonna get back to that in a moment. But you wanna set up a routine that is sustainable. When I leave my dog, I don't tend to make a big fuss about it. it my dog doesn't have separation related problems, but you know, when I leave, I also just naturally don't make a big thing about it. I just walk out the door. That's just my personality. And so it wouldn't make sense for me to start saying goodbye to my dog and get them all stimulated because that's not something that I wanna carry on for the next 15 years of my life. And so one of the themes that you're gonna be finding in this video is that I want you to be creating moments in your life that you plan on doing with your dog forever. Create a routine that makes sense for your life forever. And that is what kind of segues me into when you return to your dog. How should you behave when you return to your dog? Well, the first thing you need to think about is what is the routine that you typically want to do? A perfect example is one of the dogs in the Recovering Rover program, Banjo. So for example, when Banjo's parents came back, they said, you know, when we come into our door, we don't really want to address Banjo right away. We want to be able to put our things down. We want to, you know, turn on the coffee pot. We want to uh, address the air conditioning, whatever. We have things to do when we get into the house and we don't want to have to immediately run to Banjo and address his needs. So what do we do? We create a routine that is dependent on that cycle, right? We create a routine that allows them to extend out how soon they intervene and how soon they address their dog. And so when they return, we're working currently on getting their dog to stay calm throughout that process until they can finally move on and come back to their dog and say, okay, we've done all the things we need to over here. Now we can address Banjo. On the other hand, perhaps your dog has actually had a pretty unsuccessful mission. Perhaps when you left your dog, they accidentally went over threshold and they were feeling super emotional, super sensitive, and you got the big, drama return when you walked back into the door. And this is something that happened with Lainey. When Lainey first joined the Recovering Rover program, when her parents would walk back in the door, she would do a big anxious zoomy run and she would just be jumping, she would be barking, she would be, she'd be all over the place and it was just like, oh my God, thank God you're home, right? And it was a big emotional moment. They came to me and they said, we noticed that when we pick her up, she recovers out of that anxiety faster. You know, she just feels better quicker. And so we're able to kind of give her compassion and she is feeling better through that moment. On the other hand, if we ignore her, like all of the YouTube wizards say to do, that recovery takes a longer period of time and she just demonstrates more anxious behavior. It takes her longer to feel better. It could take her all the way up to 10 minutes just to calm down. And so they asked me, they're like, are we supposed to give her attention in that moment? 
And the answer is yes. The answer is make your dog feel better. Address her emotional needs. And here's why, because there's, let's unpack this. Because when people hear this, a lot of times they think to themselves, they're like, wait, but you, I, you know, I heard that you can't reinforce fear and that's why you're supposed to ignore the dog because if you pay attention to the dog when they're having that anxious moment, that's gonna reinforce the fear and they're more likely to demonstrate that excitement and that anxiety later on. So let's unpack this. <laughs> you cannot reinforce fear the emotion. You can only reinforce behavior outcomes of fear. Now, this is a video, this is a topic that I did a full deep dive on <laughs> to really address. And so if you're looking for all of the science and the understanding of that, you need to check out this video right here. But in summary, fear is an emotion. It is in this abstract, vague thing that that is is very indescribable and it's not something you can quote unquote reward. You can only reward the behavior outcome that is symptomatic of fear. But here's the thing, in order for that fear behavior to happen repetitiously, like people think over and over and over again, where you're rewarding, oh, you're rewarding the barking and rewarding the whining. In order for that to happen, that needs to happen a lot of times. You need to go through that routine a lot of times for your dog to start thinking that barking is what's getting you home. I'm not saying it can't happen, I'm just saying you need to make that mistake a lot of times. And here's the thing. If you are doing the desensitization protocol to treat your dog's separation anxiety correctly, if you're doing the protocol correctly, your dog won't get to that state to begin with. Now, if you're looking for the exact separation anxiety protocol, if you're looking to understand that, I did a full video on exactly that tutorial. You can watch this video next, uh, or after you watch the first one, watch this one next. But that's going to give you exactly the protocol to do to treat your dog's separation anxiety. And the thing is, if you're doing it correctly, your dog is not demonstrating those behaviors frequently enough, if at all, for it to become a routine. You should be having more successful missions where your dog doesn't hit that degree of excitability, doesn't hit that degree of pandemonium that's happening so frequently that the one-off moments that maybe your dog does hit that, your dog does accidentally go over threshold and is just like so stressed, the one couple of times that that happens and you come home, when you give your dog compassion and emotion and support them, you're not creating anything bad to happen next. Nothing bad is coming of that. All you're doing is treating your dog's emotional state in that particular moment. You can think of it as a short-term fix. What you're really doing is you're putting a temporary band-aid to help your dog through this emotional moment that they're in right now. It's a band-aid on a short-term problem. Then over here, you have the long-term protocol, the long-term program that is actually going to help your dog. And overall, you're getting more success out of that than failure, so it doesn't really matter. That's how you wanna think of it. Please, please give your dog compassion when they are having a panic attack. Address their emotional needs. And then, after that moment has passed, they're feeling a little bit better, you need to ask yourself, how can I make this better in the future? How can I make sure that my dog doesn't hit this state again in the future? On top of the how should I say goodbye and how should I return to my dog for separation anxiety, on top of that question, there are a lot of other frequently asked questions when it comes to separation anxiety. That's why I've created a free FAQ guide, which you can download in the description box below. Get your free copy of that FAQ guide. Make sure you check out this playlist, which is specifically on separation anxiety. There are a lot of tutorials in there. Your next video to watch to treat your dog's separation anxiety would be this video right here. Make sure you check that out. Make sure you hit subscribe for more separation anxiety related content, and I'll see you guys next time.